Hey, everybody. Well, I'm really excited. I've got a great guest with me. You know Diamond White as Paris Buckingham on The Bold and the Beautiful. You know Diamond White as a kick-ass recording artist. Her music is so great. <laughs> and now, adding to that, she is now going to be voicing the lead in Moon Girl in Disney Plus's new, and Disney Channel's new animated Marvel series. Um, and isn't it Luella, Lunella Lafayette, who becomes... Yeah. Who becomes moon girl how are you you're busy I'm doing, I'm doing well i'm a busy bee i'm a i'm voicing a superhero when you did you did you audition for it or how did it all come about yes. Tell me what happened in the process i auditioned about three times and i crossed my fingers and toes each time <laughs> hoping that i would get it and i ended up booking it after all the rounds now had are you a marvel fan like a marvel universe fan anyways well i'm a big fan of spider-man and iron man <laughs> but um yeah i'm a big fan of spider-man and iron man but what's so cute about this and great about this this is the first black teenage superheroine right yeah. yes right so this has never been done never before been done. and i watched the teaser and i thought it was so cute i mean her whole look and vibe did you like, how did you create the voice and determine how she would sound? Well, honestly, I took a, a lot of inspiration from myself. I just try to remember what it was like being 13 years old, being so excited about everything. And then also putting on top of that, you know, she's one of the smartest superheroes in the Marvel Universe. So, you know, she's going to be all over the place and a bit like, you know, insecure at times because she is only 13 years old. But I just remembered my, um, you know, moments growing up and had my experience shine through my voice. And I've always been a little excited, little bean. So I just brought that to the character. <laughs> Who's smarter? Lunella. 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 Don't even, you don't even have don't to finish. It. It's not yeah. me. It is right. not me. So also what was really cool was the moon girl magic song which is is that the theme song to the series right yeah, i sing the theme song as well you sing the theme song which is great and it's very bruno mars 24 karat magic vibe to it right and it rafael sadiq pretty uh, produced it yes is indeed he's executive producing all the music in the show so did you record with him or how did the recording come about of the track um i got the i've i've gotten to meet Raphael once i went to a studio and i was like you have no idea how excited i am for you to be executive <laughs> producing i brought my mom with me because she's a big fan of tony 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 and we just kind of geeked out about the show for a while and um i got the song just via email when it's the booth and we did our little moon girl magic and we called it a day I mean, it's so cute. So talk to me about what it was like voicing over the process of voicing over the part. So were you watching the action and voicing it? Like, for those that don't know, how did you do yeah, your part? So basically, I get a script and I go into the booth and I read with the amazing Sam Regal. He's my uh, uh, he's my voicing director when I go into the booth. And we just sit and play. Like, it's not a tough like you know pulling my hair out type thing it's a very fun little experience that I get to do maybe like once a week and we sit and we we just have fun we pretend to be 13 year olds and it's amazing what did you think when you first saw it like when you saw your voice with the character in the animated series what what went through your head when you kind of saw it? my mind was blown I mean with the animation and the music all coming together because the animation is very much like Basquiat, very um, very New York, um, spray painty, and also there's some really cool like Japanese elements that I found in there. The kawaii style when Luna when Moon Girl's eyes like light up and there's all the emojis, and that's a style of art that I had liked even before I even found out Moon Girl was a thing. So to see it come together like that I was like oh this is a cartoon that I would watch and I showed my mom and she was like oh I would watch this as well that's what I was thinking not you know like taking the fact that I know you and you're in it when I saw it it was like you know what I think I would actually check this out because the animation looks so mm -hmm. cool, right and then now there's a dinosaur right the devil dinosaur is her partner 
Yes, partner in crime. About the relationship between those two. The re- how is the relationship between those two? Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, she brings devil out of a portal and they immediately become inseparable with the help of a lot of hot dogs that's her (laughs) that's her that's her baby like she's never leaving him and he's never leaving her and they're telling a lot of multi-generational family culture stories and do they address a lot of themes and social issues within this and how did you feel about that well um they the whole team of this production they encourage me to bring my stories to the character there's this episode about hair i had wrote written a whole list about all the things that i go through or went through growing up as a black girl and they actually took it into consideration and said oh my god let's make an episode about her getting her first perm and jennifer hudson actually voices my hair in that episode so we do address like very real um things that african american girls and not just african american girls but multicultural cultural multi-generational it's very inclusive and she's super smart like she's she knows science technology like she like <laughs> how yeah. does she know all this how does she what how does she know all this is she just a brainiac well she's one of the smartest superheroes in the marvel universe that it just it is what it is <laughs> so uh you know on I just want to talk a minute about bold and the beautiful when we saw you on there um you know her heart was broken by Carter mm-hmm. when that whole that whole relationship went a bust for Quinn what do you remember about filming those scenes because so many people had commented they felt they felt you know oh even though the people that were rooting for Carter and Quinn they kind of were like she got screwed Paris basically yeah yeah actually there was like um that was an emotional week for me on set because I was like thinking like wow she doesn't have her father her mother doesn't support the marriage she's alone her sister's gone and there were like days on set where I was just like crying because I was like oh my god this is actually really sad and I would go to Lawrence and he'd be like yeah like this is really sad and I was like (laughs) No, but I, I think Paris will recover and she'll find a new love somewhere on the show. Right. And Zendi's out of the picture at this point. Things can never be too concrete with those two. There'll always be a special place in Paris's heart for Zende. So when you look at your career now, I, I can't imagine you thought one day you'd be on a soap opera and you'd be a Marvel teenage superhero and is this the trajectory you even thought for yourself when you were sitting as Paris, like, this is the career I want to have. Was any of this even in there? No, because I'm a really bad planner and I hate to put myself in a box. Every audition that I get, I read for and I hope for the best and I try my hardest. And that's just, that's just me. And I feel like that's why I connect to, to Lunella and Moon Girl so much is because she's like, Hey, I'm just one girl, but I can make a difference. And I'm making a difference with, you know, showing the representation. Because when I was growing up, I didn't have characters that had the same skin tone as me or even like had colorful hair on TV that my hair is always a topic that people talk about. But it's like, it's never been seen like how I do it. So I'm like, I want to keep doing it how I do it. (laughs) No, it's great. And then talk to me about, you know, your music is so great and you, you put out your your work and and what are your inspirations for that and is it tough i mean because we've talked about this like my new singles coming out february 3rd oh wow and I'm so excited for it to come out it, t- it i've been it's been a, a year that i've been making sure what i wanted to do and and to finalize it and my other music's coming out and it's very pop dance and um but i'm really proud of it and i wanted to know when you kind of go through your decision to i'm ready to put this out you know, is it a tough decision for you to be like, I'm so good with this? Or do you always find like, I could do better or I want to fix it? Or do you like just, I'm done, I got to no, love I it. actually, I actually love the imperfect Ness moment. of it, yeah. Yeah, because if it's a vibe, nobody can tell you that it's not a vibe, you know? I love, I love like once I'm, once something is stuck in my head, that's when I know it's right, don't fix it, put it out. Exactly. I think I've learned that too. It's like, you can't, so there's, there's beauty and imperfection. Mm-hmm. Sometimes in a song, right? When you're doing lyrics in a song, it doesn't, it's a little bit more emotional sometimes when it's not so perfectly sung. 
Exactly. Because anyone yeah. can have perfect pitch. It's about the emotion and how it makes people feel. So will you be doing more music soon or what's do you have Yeah, I'm I'm I have a tape that's finished. I just have to get approval from everyone and it's gonna be called This Feels Real. And it's just sitting in my back pocket. I'm waiting for the right time. <laughs> Okay, so here's our plan. When you hear my new song, if you like it, someday we have to do a duet. Okay, I'm totally down for that. I, I want. I would love to do it because I think you're amazing, and I, I, I'm like, oh, I could sing with her. Yeah, let's sing. Let's so do. I would it. love to do hey. it. So you listen to it and you let me know. Okay, I will. <laughs> um, anything else we should know about Marvel, Moon Girl, and Devil Dinosaur that we didn't touch upon? Uh, it, what do you think will be the most? Uh, is there an episode that was your favorite? The hair episode of the Ginger. The hair Hunter. episode. That's my favorite episode thus far. Yeah. Yeah. Is there more? Or have you finished the whole project or is it done? Um, we have been greenlit for season two. And that's pretty much all I can say. Um, I'm just excited for everyone to see the show. And it's not just for the kids, it's for the whole family. It's for the kids, the tweens, the teens, sit your whole family down and watch a good show about, you know, multi-generational moments. And I believe it's dropping February 10th. February 10th. On Disney Channel and Disney Plus. And wasn't Lawrence Fishburne the executive producer? Yeah, he is. And he also <laughs> voices the Beyonder. Did you meet him? Yes. He's such a goofball. I love him. He's a goofball. You know, he started in soap operas. Yeah. Started on One Life to Live, and I remember him on One Life to Live as a young, a young guy. Yeah. On there, it's amazing. So yeah, he's pretty cool. Hopefully one day I can, hopefully one day I can follow in his footsteps and produce, um, like he does, because he's got some crazy production credits. And last thing, in turn, back to Paris on Bold and Beautiful. Is there a guy on the canvas you'd love to see her with? Ooh, I would like to see her go back to Finn. Because that was not finished. That, that, was, was kinda, not that was not finished. And there's, there's probably going to be trouble in that whole thing with what's going on. Mm -hmm. so I mm -hmm. could see her being like there to comfort Finn. Yes, indeed. Would she be manipulative to get her man? Well, what I would really like to see with the character, and this is like completely just my own brain dreaming, but I would love for Paris and Sheila to team up and become like the bad girls in the club <laughs> what's it been like working with tanner is he tanner, nice? yeah tanner's nice he's really cool he's a goofball like we'd be doing <laughs> themes or we'd have to be like super i'd have to like touch his body and be super in his face and he's just like crossing his eyes on me and making silly faces he was always like super fun right because she had the fantasy right of like t of the fantasy thing and he right and you yeah have to Shooting that, he was always like very goofy, but I loved it. All right, so we've got see what happens with Paris coming up. We've got Marvel Moon Gorilla Devil Dinosaur. We got new music coming up. Any other project I should know about? Well, that's all for now. That's all we got right now. <laughs> well, congratulations on Marvel Moon Gorilla the Devil Dinosaur. I I watched the teaser. I watched um the song, and I think it's super cute. It's so cute. And I hope it becomes a series that everybody can learn from and appreciate. And it's really cool. Yeah, I think it will become one of those series. Yeah, I do too. I think you'll be busy voiceover, voiceovering for a while. Yeah. yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> right. Nice to see you. Good to uh, see you too. All right. Everybody watch Diamond White on The Bold and Beautiful and Marvel's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur dropping February 10th on Woo! Disney Channel and Disney+. Plus. All right. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.